Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Psychic Medium Tony G airing live on um, Blog Talk WSBS. Um, Rude Rangers TV and a number of uh, podcast stations. So I'm extremely excited. I'm going to get a little comfortable. I should have probably done that before the show started, but why would I? I never do. So I'm going to get a little comfortable, and we are going to get right into it. There's so many amazing things going on right now, and I want to share them with you. First and foremost, um, Rude Rangers Entertainment, Rude Rangers TV uh, has taken on Psychic Medium Tony G, so it will now be airing stations, and they're on Amazon Fire and Roku and Apple TV, you can go to Rude Rangers TV and uh, see the sh- um, see their whole lineup and also my show. Um, you can go to uh, RudeRangers.net and download the app and watch it uh, live stream on any of your devices then. I will be airing Mondays at 6 p.m. on Rude Rangers. I'm also on WSCS, and I think I air on WSCS uh, this show, Mondays at 11 a.m. And Create a Life You Love, which is my other show, airs also on WSCS. Okay, and all the uh, uh, podcasts podcasting stations. (laughs) All righty, next. Uh, Tomorrow, uh, which is uh, Tuesday, May, I was going to say April, May, (laughs) I will be at White Pearl Spa for an event. They have invited me to uh, be a guest at this event. I'll be doing readings from 4 until 8 p.m. White Pearl Spa is in Des Moines, Illinois. So if you are in the area or you want to be in the area, please join me there. Um, So that's going to be very exciting too. This is my first time there, but it's a med eye spa and a nail lounge. And they're going to have a lot of giveaways and specials. I'll have copies of my book which I have seven books that I've authored. I'm working on my eighth book. So I'm so super excited about all of that. Let's see. Uh, I also have another show, Create a Life You Love, which will be, um, I'll be recording this week via YouTube and then be it will be uploaded to WSCS and a number of other areas. And that show basically just talks about um, where do you want to be in life and how do you get there? What is the standing between you, what you want, where you want to be? And the answer for most people is so simple. And, and yet so difficult. It's, it's a thought process. It's, it's what's in your mind because we can't achieve what we don't believe. And we, and there has to be some part of us that has a small belief that this is available and it's available to us. So I do a lot of clearing work, a lot of healing work, a lot of um, <clears throat> uh, communicating about the process of getting to where you need to be in your mind and in uh, in reality then. All right. So, uh, okay, so I'm going to be taking callers on uh, Blog Talk, from Blog Talk. If you are on Blog Talk and I call your area code, please have um, one question 
one exact question or one connection, one exact connection available. When I call your area code, please take me off of speakerphone and speak directly into your phone for the audio purposes of all the shows um, that are, for all the stations that are airing the show. Okay. Hi, Genevieve. How are you today? I'm going to first go to the, the very first caller, who is um, 856. Hello, 856. Hi, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? This is Laura. Hi, Laura. How can? Where are you calling from? I'm in New Jersey. Awesome. How can I help you today? I'd like to know what you see for me around getting another job. I'm looking for something more stable. Okay. Um, so, uh, thing I hear, well, I heard March, April, May. So I feel like it, you probably have been putting uh, stuff out for this long. You have been applying for this long. I'm going, yes. or at least this long, um, and I'm going to say June because that's the next thing I hear, and then it goes into July. So I feel like something is going to come in possibly in June as far as interviews and being in that space where some uh, another company is looking at you very seriously. And I feel like in July, the final decision will be made, and it should be made in your favor. Now, the final decision may be made in June. However, you might start in July because I get a very soft July, which tells me it would either be the very beginning of July or you're going to start in July. Now, this position is going to be your choice. There are going to be things you like about this position, but there are also going to be things you do not like um, that they're putting on the table. If you take you, a position... What are the things I don't would, like? Uh, let me finish, please. Um, okay. If, if you take the position, it will be fine. It will work out. If you keep looking in August, See, I, I want to point something out right there. Thank you for saying that, by the way. Right away in our mind when we hear there might be things you don't like, right away in our mind we're like, what are they? Can I live with them? And that's <laughs> the question. The question should be, right, isn't that so true? We we all do that. Well, what I, I'm willing to compromise. How much am I willing to compromise? The question should be, is there a better offer coming? If I hold out a little longer, Will I be in a better place? We're, I've noticed, especially since um, the whole um, thing started, uh, I, I won't, I, we, we have become very desperate as, as, uh, as a world. Um, we've become so desperate for a sense of safety, even if it's a false sense of safety. We've become so desperate for money and work, and we're in such a place, some of us are in such a place of fear, we're willing to compromise anything. And it, it goes the same with relationships. If I say, well, there's somebody coming in, but, you know, there are going to be things you don't like. Well, what are those things? Maybe I can deal with them. Now, long term, <laughs> we can never deal with them. Long term, we know it, too, but we're willing to make that sacrifice out of desperation for love or whatever we want to call it, just for a change. Like, well, it's not as bad as it, the last one, the last job, the last person. So here's what I'm going to say. If you can hold off, right, and I, this goes for relationships, for jobs, for anything, if we can just be patient and know the right one, the good one, the best one is right around the corner, if we can have that knowing for ourselves and that willingness to hold out for it, we do so much better. August, August, August. So if okay. you can hold out and not be afraid, something better won't come along because isn't that what we do? 
We're so yeah. nervous that we think, well, this might be the best I get. Really? Because that's not how the universe works. That's not how angels work. If we can hold out and we're really clear about what we want, we're going to get it. So I want to I wanna take that desperation away from you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, anybody listening, anybody re-listening, so we're in a state of desperation. And I'm not going to say with work, with finding work, with relationships, just in that state of desperation. And I, I'm clear just now. So you, you may, everybody listening, re-listening may feel something. You may feel something. Uh, you, if you do, that's perfect. If you don't, it doesn't mean it's not working. It just means uh, you might not feel it. Um, I cannot tell you, and this is just one small example, the number of people who stay with someone or a job because they feel like um, – Something better won't be there. But if they knew, if they had that guarantee, which, again, is going from a place of, um, it's going, that's coming from a place of fear, not faith. Um, if they have that guarantee that there is somebody better, uh, they would be willing to let go of what they had right now and go into something better. Now, the one thing I can say, and it's, it's really, this is just an example of it. I cannot tell you the number of people who are willing to do things just to make their life easier, something that might even compromise their health just to make their life easier, just so they can, can have their so-called freedoms. And that goes into another area. But when we're in that state of... Um, Fear, when we're in that state of fear or lack or desperation, we end up with those situations. And we really need to be in that place of knowing that there is better. Now, I cannot, I, I, I don't know about um, your area, but in my area and in many other areas, they can't get employees. So I always say, if there isn't the position you want where you are, be willing to relocate. Be willing to start your whole life over if you can. Um, even if that relocation is a little relocation, you never know where it's going to take you and what it's going to offer you. Now, I don't feel like you're going to have to relocate to get this really good position in August, I feel like that position is local. I do feel like it's going to come in uh, strong for you, and I do feel like you're really going to love it. You're going to enjoy this position. You're going to have uh, – it, it's going to almost, uh, almost be like kindred spirits that you work with. Okay, it's going to feel familiar once you get there. So even though the first offer may be coming through a little sooner, there will be things that you don't appreciate, and you are going to have a better offer coming in in August. Okay, now maybe this job pops up in July, and then by August you have it, or it pops up in August, and by the end of August, you have it, okay? Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate oh, that. Oh, it's always always my pleasure, and I hope that this was helpful. And uh, please do keep me posted, okay? I will. Thank you so much for the wonderful word of advice. I, I really needed to hear it. Oh, absolutely, my pleasure. Absolutely. I am going to go to caller 860. 860, oh, how are you today? Hi, thank you so much. Absolutely, my pleasure. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, my name is Lisa Marie. I'm calling from Connecticut. 
Tracy, another East Coaster. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you for asking. How can I help you? I am wondering. I, I've been told in my life that I have gifts and that I have a book in me and good things, but nothing ever happens. And I'm just wondering, is that the truth? Is it hopeless? Okay. So I'm going to say some things that you might not love, and that's okay because I'm not here to uh, fluff you up falsely. That's not my job. My job is to be exact and honest and say say the tough things sometimes. Sometimes I have to say things that people don't love, and it's okay. I don't mind that. If you, if you don't like what I say, eh, you know what? It comes from the angels. Argue with them. Um, in order for something to happen, you have to do something, okay? And I know, okay. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I do something, I do whatever. If somebody told you there's a book in you, have you started writing the book? Have you started doing the outline? Have you sat down and in paper and computer? Have you, or are you waiting for somebody to drop a book deal in your lap? Now, I, I don't mean to sound harsh or to sound... Um, like your whatever. Sometimes we need to hear that it's a matter of making a move in order to get the move. So if you want a new house or a new apartment, you're not going to go, well, I've been told I'm supposed to move, but nobody walked up to me and offered me an apartment. Um, so I, I, and I know you're a very kind and loving and sweet person. I can hear it in your voice, but sometimes even us kind, loving, sweet people need to hear, get on it, start moving, do it. Don't make me shake you. Um, what I'm getting for you is, um, yeah, they just keep repeating the same thing, sweet girl. They keep saying, if you want it, you got to take that action. you got to make that move. Now, I have a lot of people that come. I am. I, I don't like to brag or sound braggy. I don't like to put things out there. But I have a tremendous number of psychics that come to me, people who are extremely intuitive. And I have a, a, a bigger number of people who bring their intuitive children to me, okay? And some of these people are actually psychics or intuitives that do it for work and do it as work. And others, they just have their gifts and they're like, well, I think I'm, in, I'm intuitive. I'm like, well, sure. yeah, yeah. are. <laughs> um, and then their question to me is, well, what am I supposed to do with this? And my answer to them is always the same. What do you want to do with it? Now, here's something. I'm so happy you called, and I'm please know I'm not lecturing you. <laughs> this is information not only for you but for anybody listening because there are so many people in your shoes right now. Um, first and foremost, you know, if you have gifts, and we all, every single one of us are born with gifts. It's something inside of us. It's not something that's dropped into us. It's something inside of us. It's like a muscle. Either we use it or we don't. Either we practice or we don't. And if we are going to practice, we practice to the extent that we feel safe and comfortable. And then we have to decide, okay, if I have this, where am I going to go with it? What am I going to use it for? Am I going to use it for my own guidance? And we do instinctively every day use it for our own guidance, whether we know this or not, whether we, we acknowledge it or not, we're using it for our own guidance. The other thing is, <clears throat> excuse my voice there, uh, the other thing is, do we want to take it further? Do we want to use it for guidance for others? Do we want to put ourselves out there and have people coming to us and helping other people with the guidance that we can give them? So here's 
the biggest thing I'm getting for you is if you want something to move, you might have to push it a little bit. Again, they're not letting that go. You have to decide what do you want. You have to decide how do you want to do it, where do you want to take it, and why do you want to do that. Just because somebody said there's a book in you, maybe you don't want to put that information out there. Maybe you don't want to write a book, but there is a book I, in you. And I, I and not to take away from your personal story, there's a book in everybody. We've all, every single person has had very interesting, very complicated, very who lives. But not everybody's going to want to write about that. Now, you do have at least two books in you. You could do three if you wanted to. And those books have to be determined upon what you want to let out of you, what you want to share with the world. And your gifts, you have to decide what do you want to use them for? What do you want to open up inside of you? And that's for every single person. The one thing I am going to caution you and anybody else on, don't put titles on it. Not, of course, put a title on your book. Um, the further you stay from ego, the further you can go with your gifts. Now, what do I mean by that? I watch, this is my life. Like, I love watching a lot of different aspects of um, psychic abilities, channeling, tarot, all of it. And <clears throat> the one thing that will make me turn something off very quickly is when somebody talks about them, say, oh, I'm on the 5D level. Okay, you're coming from ego. We're done. We're all on the same level. We're just getting there in different ways. Oh, my, you know, stay away from titles. Stay away from that sort of thing. Just go on your journey. Make it your journey. Your journey should be personal to you while you're taking it, and you shouldn't have to blow your trumpet about it when you're done because it will speak for itself. If you have to blow your trumpet about who, what, where, why, where, you are there. You're not even halfway there because your trumpet is your ego and your spirit will shine and everybody will see that. Okay, love? So my very, very, very long answer for you is that, but I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a clearing right now, a healing, a clearing um, that says we are going to clear you are stuck. I'm going to clear that. You're, uh, you're in faith about being able to move forward with this. I'm going to clear that because I get a no. And this is for you, anybody listening and re-listening. And I want you to know they do want you to move forward in these areas and use these gifts because they're important for you and they're important to you, but they're also important for others. Whatever you put out there will help another person if it's put out there correctly. I hope this was helpful, love. Thank you so very much for blessing me today. Thank you. You are so welcome. I'm going to go directly to the next caller, and the next caller is 415. Hey, 415, how are you today? Where are you calling from? What's your name? Uh, hi, Tony. This is Kate, and I'm calling from um, Washington State. Excellent. How can I help you today? Um, well, a lot of the things, of course, have applied to me. Um, I um, just landed here from moving uh, two days ago, and I had a great <laughs> trip up driving for – a couple of days, and so, but I feel kind of out of balance. So, just any advice on how to gain my footing? Um, and I'm just kind of feel exhausted all the time. Okay, yeah, you know what? This at uh, the first, I'm getting three things immediately. This was very emotional for you. 
Uh, and I think yeah. any time we relocate, even if it's from one house to another, it's just emotionally exhausting. So you're emotionally exhausted. And I think a lot of us are. So I'm just doing a clearing on that right now for you. The other thing I'm hearing, and it sounds so bizarre, but I love it. <laughs> you are acclimated to a new energy. So every geographic oh. area has their own frequency or energy. And yeah. <clears throat> You are acclimating to the frequency. You're getting ready to acclimate to the frequency that you're in. And I, I just want to ask a few questions um, of them upstairs. Is this frequency higher than hers? Okay. I want you to make sure <clears throat> you are keeping your frequency high, mm -hmm. your energy high, and your mood solid. And I think you know what I mean. I, I don't think I have to go into great detail about that. I think you can know what that means. You're a very strong person, and mm -hmm. you're typically a very, uh, just a solid person. Like, uh, Balance, yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'm going to use your term. She is balanced or in balance, and I get a no, so we're going to clear that, and that's for you, everybody listening and re-listening. Give this Ooh. two to three yeah. days, and that you should be fully acclimated and ready to go, but by the end of today, you should feel much, much better. Now, for you, everybody listening, everybody listening, re-listening, I'm going to do a quick, um, they are clear, I get a no, so I'm going to clear that, they are unclear, we're going to fix that also. Um, whew, and for anybody listening, re-listening, the most important thing is to be like in that really solid, clear state. So we're going to do that, we're going to see where that takes us, and we are going to uh, allow all of this to clear for everybody. Um, I think by... I want to say within an hour or two, you should feel much, much better, and then you should get stronger and stronger from there. I do feel like this was a really good move for you. You're going to, um, I just, the cornucopia thing, and I hear yes. the door to prosperity is opening for you. So Wonderful. whatever this means for you, I'm very happy and excited for you. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. I really felt that in all the lower chakras. It really it feels oh. more aligned already. It felt like uh, they were all and swirling you know, around. So <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm going to tell you, when we do relocate, it is that lower chakra area of safety, security, mm. home. Yeah. Really get yeah. thrown off just for a second and um, has, um, has us in that place where we are sometimes not feeling as safe and secure as where we came from. So I want to thank you so much for calling in. I'm so grateful for your, um, for you letting me uh, know that. And I just um, took my phone off of speaker for a moment because we're almost at the 30-minute mark for blog talk. Blog talk, folks, please don't go anyplace. I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> but that show I always do for 30 minutes for WSCS. So I'm going to thank everybody on WSCS for watching this show today. If you would like to see the rest of this show, please uh, visit my YouTube channel and uh, you can just, you get to watch the show in its entirety, however long it goes for. And my YouTube channel, if you go to YouTube and Google Tony Green Psychic Medium, you will find my YouTube show, okay? So uh, thank you so much, uh, WSCS, for uh, joining me. I am now going to go back here, do this, go to speaker, there we are. Now I'm going to go to the next caller, 215. Hey, 215, how are you today? 
Hi, Tony. How are you doing today? Excellent. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good. My name is Susan, and I'm from Philadelphia. Uh, East Coast is coming through so strong this morning. I love it. All my East Coast. <laughs> How can I help you, love? I was wondering about my relationship. Okay, what's your question about your relationship? Um, is it going to go forward or it isn't? Okay, there are, okay, who? okay. Um, who? there are well, a the way lot. You say, yeah, there's a lot of complications in this relationship. It's not just one thing, right? It's not like there isn't just this one thing that is a, is a, questionable thing in this relationship. There actually are quite a few things in this relationship that have been complicating it for quite some time. Um, whether this goes forward or not isn't the question here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I, I hope you understand why they're saying it the way they're saying it. The question here okay. is, can this go forward in a healthy, functional way. And if it cannot go forward in a healthy, functional way, what the fudge sticks are we doing? Right? Are we trying to win mm -hmm. just to win? Are we trying to make it work just because we've been in it for so long? Are we trying to keep it because it's comfortable? So if here's my I, I said this since my very first show. I said this, I don't know, since prior to my first show when people come in. If you are not growing in the area of love, if you are not growing in love, you are growing apart. And it's always funny to me when people I know make that statement to me like I've never heard it before because it's my it's one of my key statements in 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 my show and in you can go back to my probably my very first show and to my very first clients and they'll say, Yeah, that's what you said to me. Um, if you are not growing in love you are growing apart. If you are not growing together, you are growing apart. Now, this situation, we can really love someone. We can be so in love with someone and mm -hmm. still have that person not on the same page with us. And then at that point, we have to make the very, very difficult decision of can, can we stay together can we move forward? Can we make this healthy for both of us? Can we sacrifice our individual wants and needs and come together to make this healthy for both of us? Or has too much damage been done and we need to just, you know, kind of move on and, and, heal ourselves, spend some time alone healing ourselves, and then, you know, look for something else. Now, a lot of people aren't in a place where they're willing to let go, give up, or give in. And I always say, why? What? And, and yeah. the, the answer can't be love. The answer can't be love. That's just a blanket, a Band-Aid we throw over things. The answer mm -hmm. has to be more logical, actually, because if you wouldn't let a stranger on the street have the circumstances with you that you have in this relationship, jump. If you wouldn't let a stranger on the street treat you the way your partner has started treating you, jump, or the way you started treating your partner, typically it's mutual. Mm. If there is not mutual respect, love means nothing at this point. Love means absolutely nothing at this point. So the question isn't, 
can this relationship go forward? Is there a future with this relationship? The true question is, can this relationship be healthy and functional and respectful? And that, my love, is where the answer lies for you. And I'm going to say intuitively, um, you already know that answer. It would take a lot of work, a lot of dedication, will and want on both people's parts. Now, sometimes just a little too much has happened for people to trust that even if we put the work in, this can go there. And then I ask you, why is it so important to hold on to something that is seemingly um, that is seemingly uh, it's like trying to hold a snowflake in your hand and keep it a snowflake. It's just going to melt and dissolve. Um, so you only you can decide how much longer, and I don't like the word dysfunction, but only you can decide how much longer you can stay in a situation that doesn't serve your highest good or the highest good of the other person that is with you. Um, only you can decide how much longer you can allow yourself to do this is the best answer they can give you. I, I really hope yeah. this made sense and is helpful. Yes, it was. Thank you. You are so welcome. I blog talk folks don't go anyplace. I'm gonna flip over to my YouTube screen. Hey, oh my goodness, I haven't looked at YouTube since I started my show and there are so many people saying hi. I'm so excited about this. Okay. Hey Em, how are you? Genevieve, I love you. Cheryl, hey Cheryl, happy Monday to you too. Um I'm just gonna call you Joe. Joe, okay, so for everybody on YouTube, if you, I forgot to post this today in the comments, and I'm so sorry about that. If you want to ask a question, call 845-277-9131. Um, mostly, I, the questions from Blog Talk, those, everybody on Blog Talk has been trying to get through for months and um, ask a question. So I'm, I mostly take, their questions, but um, wanted to ask is Jackson, if Jackson is going, uh, okay, Joe, I'm going to say this. Um, you want to know if Jackson, I, I'm not sure if you want to know, is he going to contact you soon? Is he going to want to be with you? And, and again, I'm going to do another clearing on desperation, okay? Um, so let's clear all the desperation. And I'm going to say this. Um, I, I'm just going to say, um, you know, when we want someone or are in a place of, uh, is Jackson going to want her as a girlfriend? Yes. Is it going to last long? No. Okay. Here's what I'm going to say. Um, when you meet him, go slow. I'm not when you meet him, but when you, when the two of you talk, don't have expectations, go slow. Um, don't, You know, sometimes we meet somebody and we're, we're like making wedding plans. We're trying to be in that space where we can, uh, you know, already 20 steps ahead. Sometimes somebody comes in just to show us what we want and what we don't want. 
And sometimes we're in such a hurry, we're overlooking things that are blatant and blaring in our face. So please, uh, Joe, go slow with this and be open to other options that may come your way. Okay, I'm going to take another caller from Blog Talk. I'm going to go to 843. Hey, 843, how are you today? Uh, Good afternoon. Can I be heard? I'm sorry? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on? What's your question? Uh, I see you were talking about books and spirituality. Uh, My intent is to uh, thank you for all you do, by the way. Um, Oh, my pleasure. Strengthen my uh, intuitive skill sets. Mhm. And um, I mean, I know that they say the Aquarian energy is coming forth, and a lot of people are awakening. I don't really feel that I've been asleep anyway, but um, I occasionally <laughs> right? get, get hits on things. Yes. Uh huh. Okay, so oh, I thought your, you were going to say something. Oh, uh-huh. is your question? So uh, I want to I want to make sure I understand your question. So can you please what what's your question, love? I want to know how to strengthen uh, my intuitive gifts. I know that. Okay. Um, That's a great question, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a healing or a clearing. There's something stopping or blocking uh, intuitive gifts. Uh, The intuitive gifts are as strong as they could be. Okay, so we're going to clear that. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Practice, practice, practice. You just, you really um, need to practice. I had to mute you because there was some background noise, but please, um, the idea is to just practice. The more you use it, the more it's going to come through, the clearer it's going to be, and the better you're going to understand it. The way my intuitive gifts work is very different than the way anybody else is is going to work. There may be similarities, but they won't be the same. We hear it and we practice it in different ways that are unique to us. Um, I always say, However your intuition comes through, if it's that gut feeling, if it's that uh, message that pops into your head like a thought, if it's uh, colors or, you know, there are literally people who work with fairies and hear and see fairies, um, and that's how they get their intuitive stuff. There are people who who get their messages through angels and they see angels and it all comes through them. And then there are people that just, they just blurb it out. They don't need to call it something. Um, It just comes out. However it comes through for you, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. There's no right or wrong way to be intuitive. There's no right or wrong way to use your intuition as long as it's of love and light. Remember, if you're working with darkness, um, all that's going to fall back on you. And I don't believe in darkness per se. Um, I just believe the energy we play in is the energy we experience. So if we're playing in the energy of love and light and uh, do no harm, we're going to play in that energy, that's what we're going to experience. If we are playing in an energy of uh, malice, that's the energy we're going to experience because that's where we are. Um, You can't go to an amusement park and expect to see an opera. It's just that simple. You can't go to an, uh, an opera and expect to ride a roller coaster, okay? The energy you're playing in, and and not that there's, if you love opera or the the entertainment part, both of those are good. I just am saying I'm just, uh, 
saying as for example this is you can't be here and expect this and you can't be here and expect this other side um so just know keep it clean keep it of love and light uh which i'm sure you do i can tell by listening to you you are very honorable you have a lot of integrity and you do want to keep it of love and light you do want to keep it of a higher standard um and that's always the most important thing. And the one thing, you know, I will say, if you are trying to increase, improve your intuitive gifts, the first thing you need to know is they're not outside you. It's not something you you get. Um, it's something you're born with. We're all born able to hear and see the other side, to get to have that intuition and to manifest everything we want like crazy. It's our own belief. Um, it's our own belief, our own belief systems that get developed and programs that get developed after birth that make us f f uh, lose or forget our intuitive, intuitive gifts. So uh, as we were growing up, we probably had imaginary friends or we saw relatives and it was told, oh, that's not real or don't, don't think of that or maybe we didn't even express it to other people. The point is we've had this in us. We were born with it. It's our birthright for every single person. This is your birthright. Uh, when you hear that turn left up here or don't go there or don't go out tonight. That's your intuition. That's your highest self trying to protect you and help you. And when you get those messages for other people, that's your intuition guiding you to help other people. We, every single one of us has it. Every, every single one of us has it. There's not one person that does not have it, okay? It's a matter of how open are we to, A, admitting it's intuition, B, allowing it to come in more and come in stronger without being afraid or freaked out by it, right? If we can allow it to come in stronger or to come in better without being freaked out by it or being afraid of the answers, that's when the magic happens. Now, I'm going to tell you a little thing about me <laughs> that I probably should not share. Um, I can get information for anyone. They ask me questions, boom, 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 the answers pop off. Just like blah, 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 blah. They come through me without me even thinking about it. But when I'm asking a question <laughs> for myself, <laughs> The answers come through. Don't get me wrong. They do. They come through. They're there. But if it's something really important, I have to go to somebody else because I'm so, um, I want to make sure I get the right answer and I'm not just getting the answer that I personally want. Because I can do that. Like, um, like for example, in a relationship, if I, if I, am nervous, like, is this just the answer that I want about this person, or is this the truth about this person? I might have to go outside of my my own intuition, because sometimes I can just get, <laughs> you know, I'm really nervous because I'm starting to play with my Archangel Michael thing, and um, I might have to uh, go to somebody else to get that answer because I know the answer I want to hear, so I need to double check. Am I ignoring my intuition just to hear what I want to hear? It happens. It's a thing. It happens for all of us, right? So it's better always to start when you're practicing your intuitive abilities. Start with yes, no questions. And you can start with yes, no questions about yourself or about others. Um, you can, and, and again, don't, don't have um, malice 
don't ask questions out of malice or lower vibrational, low energy questions like, is this person going to get fired so they get out of my work? I don't want to work with this person anymore. Are they going to get fired? Don't. Don't do that. Don't do anything. Don't put energy out there about anyone that you wouldn't want put out about you. Because what happens, once you put that energy out there, it's touching you. Good, bad, or indifferent, it is touching you. So you have to be in that space where you are only putting good things out there. So instead of saying, is this person going to get fired, say, is there a way we can have a better connection? What can I do so we can get along better if we have to work together? Um, That's the way to approach it, okay? And so in the beginning, start with yes, no questions. In the beginning, start with questions that allow you to get a very quick, simple answer. And from there, you can start listening to if any other guidance comes in, okay? If you want to communicate with loved ones on the other side, close your eyes and or have your eyes open and visualize that loved one. See an image of them and then just ask a question and see what answer you get. And again, sometimes it's easier to start with yes, no, because you can hear their voice saying yes, no inside your head. It shouldn't be something that is whispered to you from outside. It's always like a thought in your head because loved ones and angels communicate telepathically with us. That's their mode of communication. It's also our mode of communication. We just don't use it. Um, You might see your loved one nodding or uh, doing the no motion or the yes no motion. Um, and, And it's up to you if you trust that then. Do you trust the intuition you're getting? Do you trust the answers you're getting? And to what extent? So you might see, get a yes on an answer and you go, is that really it? Well, okay, well, probably it is. I'm not saying like go ask if you're going to win at the casino and then invest all your money. Don't do that. They might mean you're going to win like $5, not like, all of it. So the bottom line is, if you want to know how to increase your intuition, just use it. It's, if you were born with it, it's not something that, that somebody else has to do something to give it to you or fix it. It's in you. It's there. It's yours. And it was put there so you could always be in connection with the heavens. It was put there so you would always be connected to the angels and the, the, the guides and to know that you are never alone, you're not on this journey by yourself. And mostly, and, and I cannot stress this enough, to know that, that you are part of the whole, like you are part of the all that is, and that's what we return to, the all that is, that energetic, we return as like the, um, oftentimes when people come in to to ask about their loved ones on the other side, the first thing they want to say is, are they upset? Are they angry? Are they happy with, and yeah, you know what, they are. And, and I, you know, sometimes people come in and they, they get a session about their loved one on the other side, and they're like, um, what do they want to say to me? You know what? It's going to be the same every single time. They love you. They want you to know they love you. Because love, in the end, and it sounds so hokey, in the end, love is all there is. So if you're just asking for a basic message, they're going to say they love you. That's the most and the only message our loved ones on the other side want to give us. I love you. You are love. Okay, that's it. That If you're asking, what do they want to tell me? Hands down, every single time, they're going to say that. Now, when we go back to the other side, and I know I've had three near-death experiences, 
Okay. I have some reason I'm still here. <laughs> so um when we go back to the other side, as soon as we leave our body, and I cannot stress this enough, all the pain is gone. Every ounce of pain, emotional, physical, so on and so forth. All the anger, fear, everything is gone. Mm -hmm. And we start ascending. At some point, we start our, we just start floating up and we start seeing our loved ones. And we're like, hey, hey, there's no, oh my God, I, this or that or, um, you were so horrible. There's none of that. We're just letting go and going, okay? And because this life is a choice, because going back home is a choice and staying here is a choice, if at some point, if it's not your final exit point, if it's not your final death point, if at some point on your way back home, you say, I want to go back, you're going to be put back in your body. Trust me, I know. Because it's a choice to go home and it's a choice to stay here. So be careful when you're saying, I don't want to be here, I'm done with this, there's nothing for me here, because you might be put in a position where you are literally given that option to go home, okay? And, and that's not what most of us want. No matter how sad, depressed, or how bad things look in the moment, what we really want is for things to get better, what we really want is to be happy. What we really want is to feel love. Just to feel love. That's what we really want. We really, really want to be loved. And that all, that starts within us. And that's, an, that's a whole another show for another day. Um, so, if you're connecting, <laughs> where did this even start? Oh my God, where am I even in this conversation? <laughs> I can't, like, I've gone so far, I don't even know where I started, but here's the bottom line. <laughs> here's the bottom line of connecting. This is our God, our birthright. And the more in that place of love and spirit that we are, the more we, the more easily, the, the more easily, that is perfect English, uh, the, the, the easier it is for us to connect with loved ones on the other side, angels, guides, so that if we can start to let go of all the fear and apprehension and sadness and anger, um, and just be in that place of it is what it is, and it is what it's supposed to be. It is what it is, and it is what it's supposed to be, and I'm going to make power moves. I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to find the good in everything, and guess what? Tomorrow it is going to be what it's going to be, but it's going to be a little freaking better because I made a move. I did something. I jumped. I, I don't care if you jump an inch. I don't care if you jump a centimeter, jump. I don't care if you move the length of your pinky toe, move, do something. And, you know, I, I just say this all the time. Do one thing every day that you love, whatever that thing is. I don't care what it is. It can be something super private. Go do it. After, do it after my show, not during my show. <laughs> I don't care if it's something, you know, like that, that, that is eating one chocolate a day and you love it and it releases those uh, endorphins. Do it. 
do one thing every day that you absolutely love. Because love grows from love. Okay? And the more things you do that you love, the better your life is going to be. Because love is who we are, what we are, what we come from, what we return to. I cannot... I cannot even stress this enough to you. I cannot, I can say this a million different times in a million different ways. You, at your core, are love. Everything else is an illusion covering up your truth. And it's covering it up because you're afraid to be vulnerable. You're afraid to be hurt. You're afraid to be in a position where you might be compromised or you might get hurt. But if you weren't afraid, who would you be? If you weren't afraid, what would you do? How would you show up? If you knew you couldn't be hurt and don't say, oh, but this guy 10 years ago, who cares? Let that go. He didn't. Nobody did anything to you that you can't uh, that that can't be looked at from a different perspective. In order to get to a point where someone hurt you, two people were playing a game, and nobody won because once you're playing a game, nobody wins. Whether it's a friendship, a relationship, any of it. Okay, so only the ego gets hurt. Yeah, there it is. Boom. Thank you. (laughs) That's really good. Boom. Only your ego gets hurt. So if you're walking around, I was hurt, I this, I that, you're walking around in your ego. And if you don't know how to get out of ego, let me help you. Okay, we're going to clear that right now. The truth of the matter is, the more you are in that state of unconditional self-love, the less other people have power over you. Mm-hmm. 100%. Because if you unconditionally love yourself, nothing anyone else does or does will ever affect you because you know the truth about you, your divinity, and that's it, your pure, true divinity. It's just that simple. You're an energetic being with the illusion of flesh around you. And the more you are in that state of love and unconditional self-love, the more your intuitive ability will shine through. Okay, thank you for joining me here on YouTube today and on Blog Talk and on Rude Rangers TV, um, WSCS. Thank you. I'm really, um, I am beyond humbled at where everything with this is going. And thank you, Rudy, from Rude Rangers for uh, for making me a part of your station and your team. I'm so grateful for that. Everybody have an amazing week until next Monday at noon. Remember, it's your job to create the miracles in your life. That's the only way to guarantee that they're the miracles you want. Take care.